name is Elisa and welcome back to my channel, All You Can Eat with Elisa. In today's episode, I'm going to be bringing you my famous, I say famous, but it's family famous, uh, lemon or lime tart. I've got limes, so we're going with the lime tart. And yeah, we'll start with the crust. So right here, there's only a few ingredients. I've got one cup of all-purpose flour going into, it's already been sifted, going into the food processor. A third cup of uh, powdered sugar, or confectioner sugar. And then a stick of uh, butter. I tend to like to use salted butter. I know a lot of recipes call for unsalted and then obviously you can add your own salt but I've always found that salted butter it just gives it a little bit extra flavor I just think it tastes better so I'm going with it this is a fourth of a teaspoon of salt about a teaspoon of vanilla extract okay here we go so you'll see it's like powder still, and that's totally fine. It'll eventually clump together. So it's, it's more like that Play-Doh now, you can see. This is ready, I'm just gonna pull this all in a ball together before we put it into our tart pan. It's pretty soft right now. So I'm just, kneading this together a little bit. So I've got here a nine inch tart pan. It's with the one with the removable bo bottom. I lightly greased it, sometimes I don't. In this case, I just did a, a light brush with butter. So yeah, you just want to, this is a really easy recipe. There's no, you know, rolling out the dough. You pretty much just spread it apart into your pan, into your tart pan. And you know, just work it, work it from the center and then out, and then you'll go up the sides. You're gonna want to preheat your oven to 425, which I already have going. Once you get it up to the sides too, I usually like to pull it up a little bit above the sides if you can. Okay, so, oops, that's okay. Finished product is here. I am going to grab a fork and I'm just going to prick holes all over the dough because we're not putting any weights in there. I just want to make sure that it doesn't puff up too much. It will puff up a little bit, you guys, and that's totally fine. Um, this is just going to prevent it from puffing up too much. You can just go all over. I like to do kind of around the, the edge because that sometimes gets puffage. Okay, next step, I'm actually gonna put this in the freezer or in the refrigerator for about, I don't know, 15 minutes just to have it all cooled off. Okay, so like I said, today's gonna be lime, so uh, I am gonna be juicing a half a cup worth of lime juice. I have this little um, strainer in here because I don't want all the pulp. So whatever works for you while you're juicing, it's fine. And then, like I said, if you don't, if you have a combination of lemons and limes, you can totally vary this up where you can do a mixture. I did a mixture last time of lemons and limes, but you, it's really up to you and both both versions, or all three versions, whether it's lemon, lime, or lemon, lime, they have turned out great. So right now, based on my limes, I've done almost two, and that's a fourth of a cup, so it looks like I'll probably need the re all four. Oh, but before that, you know what? I like to add a little bit of zest because when this goes into the rest of the mixture for the filling, the zest gives it that extra um, citrus essence. It really does make a difference. 
in my opinion, when you add zest to any ingredient where you're using the actual product. So if you're making something with lemons, limes, or, or even oranges, um, adding that zest to it just turns the dish up a notch and um, really hones in on that citrus that you're using. What's gonna happen is after we do the filling, I'm also gonna do the whipped cream on top. I usually like to zest a little bit on top of the whipped cream too. I'm just gonna zest some extra because I need to use this lime for this. I'm just gonna zest a little bit extra in my bowl to save for later. You don't actually have to zest on top of, the because you already got this flavor in here, but I just like to do it Number one, for just a little presentation, and number two, just to show what type of uh, citrus you're using. So if they can see a little bit of the green zest on top, automatically most people will know that you've got lime going on. So I was a little bit shy on my estimation of how many limes would be needed for half a cup, because you just don't know how juicy the limes are gonna be when you get them from the grocery store. So fortunately I had a couple, and I knew this, I knew I had a couple of lemons on hand in my fridge and lemons, at least the ones I had in the last batch, tend to be more juicier. So I knew I had enough um, to add, to supplement if I didn't have enough limes. And in this case, that was the case. So does that look like half a cup? Great. Okay, so I have my tart that I had refrigerated, so it's nice and cool. I probably had it in there for about 15 minutes. Okay, going into the oven, 425 for about, I would say 12 to 15 minutes. I usually uh, keep an eye on it, I'll put the light on. Okay, in the meantime, while that is baking, we can proceed to make our filling. So, I've got one can of sweetened condensed milk. It's an easy recipe. I'm kind of a little, um, I didn't want to really show, I, I didn't want to show this recipe to everyone because now my family's going to know how simple this recipe is. So that was one can of sweetened condensed milk, um, about a third a cup of sour cream, that's good enough. And then we will add our half a cup of lemon juice. No, in this case, a half a cup of our lime juice with a little bit of lemon. So we had a supplement, if you recall. And I'm just gonna whisk this together until it's nice and incorporated. You see the little bits of the zest in there. So keep on whisking this until it all comes together and then it's all nice and smooth. Just a few minutes, really, not even. Okay, and we're done. So we are just gonna wait um, until the, the crust is done. We'll pour this into the crust. This will just need to bake for another eight minutes or so, just to, so all of these ingredients blend together in the oven and then once it cools, we will make the whipped cream. Oh, there goes my timer. Telling me that was, I said it for originally 15, but always take a look. Once it starts, you get that light brown. You could take it out uh, because this is actually gonna go back in the oven just for a few more minutes. Probably five if you're using a convection oven. Uh, maybe closer to eight for regular non-convection. All right, here's the good stuff. So, it's just gonna go back for just a few more minutes so all of these ingredients um, blend together. And you don't wanna do it where it's gonna brown at all, that's not the purpose. We will just, 
take it out and then we'll end up putting it back into the refrigerator. So I also want to turn down my heat to 350 for this last part. Okay. So we have got our tart out of the oven. And before we start in the whipped cream, I want to cool this down. The fastest way to do that, we're gonna pop this in the fridge. I'm actually gonna pipe this later once we're done. So going in first is one cup of heavy whipping cream. I personally like the heavy versus just the regular whipping cream because I think that the heavy whipping cream gives it a nicer, uh, smooth, thick consistency. And it actually, especially if you're piping, it keeps its, its shape better. And um, because I am piping and I want it to last longer, I'm actually gonna stabilize it with a little bit of cream of tartar. You don't have to do this, this is optional, but because I want it to last a lot longer, and I didn't mention this in the beginning, but actually this tart recipe is, I think it tastes better the day after. I've also made it where I've made it in the morning and I brought it in the evening and that's good too, but really the next day I think makes a big difference, especially because if you recall, we had used that citrus zest and I feel like all the, the oils from that and the fragrant comes out more the day after. Okay, so in the mixing bowl this is my heavy whipping cream. And I'm just using a hand mixer, it's easy. So I'm going to put two tablespoons of powdered sugar, a little bit of vanilla too. Again, the vanilla is optional, but I just think that it gives it a nice, it's about half, maybe a teaspoon of vanilla if you want to throw that in there. Ooh, and we can't forget about the, the cream of tartar actually. Okay, fourth of a teaspoon. Should do it. All right, here we go. probably going to take a few minutes. Again, if all of your uh, if all of your tools are cold, it should come up faster. So it's starting to come together. You can see these are soft peaks now. Okay. That's pretty stiff to me. That's that was pretty close to almost going over actually, but that was, that's okay. It's all good. Let's grab our tart and we will start piping. Okay, tart is out. It's cooled down and I am just gonna slip this off the side. See how easy that came out? And then we're gonna put it on and then we will pipe our whipped cream next. Okay, so for those that are not um, used to using a piping bag, I always recommend trying to fold the top down uh, as much as you can, maybe halfway. Uh, some people also like to just put it in a tall glass and then put the sides over it, but uh, yeah. I'm not gonna do that because it's just, it's just wasting more time for me. So we are gonna scoop this whipped cream back in here. And I'm using a, a, Tico, a Tico brand 824 star tip. It's my go-to piping tip. I just like the size of it. It looks pretty. You can make uh, flower or floral rosettes too with this tip. Ooh, already coming out. You don't need you don't need to pipe. I mean, I've done it where I'm just spreading the whipped cream across the entire thing and that looks beautiful as well. And it looks more like, you know, rustic, rustic homemade uh, look versus more of like the bakery style look. It's whatever you like and whatever you wanna go for. And quite frankly, if you have time, so. Perfect. It's, there we go. 
All right. So final touches, you can leave it as is, but we had that zest that I reserved a little bit earlier that I'm just gonna sprinkle on top for a little added color and to show that this is a lime tart, even though technically we were a little bit short on the lime and we added a, uh, a few tablespoons of that lemon. And there you have it, a lime tart. All right, so for the best part is the tasting part. So I've got a slice already cut out. You could take a look to see at the layers. And of course, like I said, this is gonna taste, I think it's still gonna be good, don't get me wrong, but it'll be better the next day. But we'll still have to take a taste test. Mmm, mm, 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 mm. really good. The shortbread crust is nice and buttery and tender. Part of what makes that tender is also in that dough I use powdered sugar versus just regular sugar. I think it gives it that little bit of softer texture. And uh, this is just nice and smooth and creamy. Not too, I, I would say it's not too, it's sweet, but not too sweet. So. And that little zest just pops. So this wraps things up. Thanks for watching. Please feel free to comment and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And look forward to the next content drop. Thanks, everyone. I can open this up. Just kidding. This is technical difficulties. And we'll stop.